Hello. Oh, the toys. Um, I was in my notes. I have prompt Jeffrey to say recording. I need to take that off my consistent header. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the June 23rd meeting of the Intergovernmental Cooperation Authority for Harrisburg. Our first item of business today is the approval of minutes, uh, which I hope is everyone has had a chance to review. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the minutes for the monthly meeting of the ICA in May, 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I should have mentioned that uh, we are still awaiting Carla Hodge uh, to join us. Otherwise, all the members of the ICA board are here as is Jeffrey, our general, our authority manager, as well as our general counsel, Anna Marie. Um, and I am now going to turn the meeting over to Jeffrey and ask him to report on the uh, financials, as well as the three other issues I think that we have itemized on the um, agenda. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, those of you who are on the board, you've received a copy of the summary of bills paid for June 23rd, 2021. Um, you will note that, that the June is the end of our fiscal year. Um, so first of all, there's two, four, seven, eight bills that were paid this month. Um, one of them was our renewal of our E&O insurance policy. And I wanna thank especially those of the members of the board that assisted me with getting that ENO policy renewed. There was some additional paperwork that was necessary. Uh, we have a starting balance at the beginning of the period of $109,002.17. We are completing this period with a final balance of $98,401.71 in our bank account. Obviously, it is June 23rd. There could be some lagging invoices. But if not, uh, that will be our fund balance going into the new fiscal year. Um, obviously, this was an unusual year with COVID, and there were many plans of the authority that didn't occur um, in terms of both revenue and expense. Um, we have, oh, Carla is in the waiting room. Let's let her in. Um, we have interest earnings year to date at $7.87. Um, so we, um, will uh, proceed in my second item on my report, so I just bring it up, is to discuss, discuss the e &O insurance. So that was renewed um, successfully. Um, and I do have what's called the binder in my possession um, to start the new year. Um, so we have two insurance policies. We have general liability, which was renewed a month ago, and then e &O, which was just re renewed this month. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about is because this is the end of the fiscal year at our next regularly scheduled meeting, which would be the July meeting, and we're going to talk about that in a moment with, with the president um, of the board, we are going to, uh, the chair of the board, we are going to need uh, to adopt a budget for next fiscal year and discuss a request to DCED for next year's funding. So I'm just putting that out there. Madam President, that uh, you can consider that for your next meeting, for the July meeting. That would be regular order of business for both. And then I know we did have a note on our agenda um, to talk about the site of the July ICA meeting. And I don't know if you'd like me to talk about it or, or you have some thoughts. Well, and I think we touched on it a little at the last meeting. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you. I think the two sites we were looking at were seeing if Temple would allow us again, or in the alternative, if we would do it at startup. Um, and I don't know, I know there are costs that perhaps would be associated with both. So uh, right. do, So the do question it. is, are we affirmatively going to have an in-person meeting in, in July? Is that decision now been made by the board? And if so, yes, I am still waiting for Temple University get back to me. So I can't confirm that it'll be which place it'll be, but I will assume then for after today that we are going to have our next regular scheduled July meeting in person. 
Well, I don't know that we took a vote. I know that Anna Marie had reported on uh, whatever the emergency measure was that was in force, and we had somewhat covered the alternatives of when that might be lifted. I don't know if that's been lifted. And if it is lifted, does it mean we automatically have to go back and forth person? Otherwise, we can certainly vote today to get the consensus of the board, or at least the opinion of the board. Uh, so Anna Marie, I guess I'd ask you to weigh in at this point. Right. Um, the, the issue of whether you have to meet in person or not has been hotly debated. Um, there was just a uh, um, municipal lawyers colloquium, which is minds, many minds greater than mine um, last week. And they all have decided that the um, in-person meeting requirement is now back in play, that the waiver that had been granted under the emergency powers declaration is um, no longer, and that the, uh, the only, there was some confusion because parts of the waiver are still in play, but those all go to the issue of what I'll call healthcare providing waivers, like telemedicine, those, those sorts of things. And they do not apply to the municipal meeting waivers that have been granted. So um, municipal meetings are back live. Now, Jeffrey and I and any witnesses or you can still have a what I'll call mixed modem uh, meeting. You can have participating public join via Zoom or whatever medium, but the board members themselves um, have to meet live. So that takes care of that vote. Um, so, sorry, Doug. Yeah, just uh, one quick uh, legal question. Uh, under the Milk Marketing Board case, is that still in force? So if a board member for business or some other reason needs to be out of town, they can still attend uh, virtually, correct? Yes, they can still attend virtually, but you have to have a quorum live. Thank you. Okay. And one more point, um, because I of, of my schedule, the, the July meeting falls on the uh, 28th of uh, July, and I am uh, not able to be at that meeting if that's the night of the meeting or the afternoon of the meeting, and therefore I couldn't operate a hybrid, uh, such as your, a, a Zoom and live event, um, because I'm unavailable. So the question would be, um, do you want to do do it all one way or the other? I could I could do Zoom with me there, but I can't do Zoom from, for example, at Temple University because I can't be at Temple University. The uh, well, and I could always take over. You could set up a meeting, and I could initiate it uh, because I know you you said that you can't be there. So we we will strive to do it, Jeffrey, without you. Thank you, uh, and Madam. I may be traveling during that period. My plans are not totally locked in. So I just ask you to, to keep that in mind. Okay. Jeffrey, you know, you can do a hybrid. You'd have to initiate the meeting from wherever you are. And if we had the address of wherever we are, um, theoretically, somebody, it would work. Correct, Henry. But somebody would have to be in the room with the yes. board with a laptop and a camera. Or the board would, or the room would have to be set up for that. I and I yeah. won't be there I, I to do that, but right. it is possible. Right. All right. And so those are logistics. We can, we can certainly figure that out. So let's assume that it's in person and we will just wait for Jeffrey to let us know. Uh, are we fine for telling Jeffrey to just decide whether he thinks Temple or Startup is the better venue based on feedback you get? I'm seeing everyone nod. So let's, Jeffrey, you've got that um, license to do as you please. Okay, I will work out the details and be in touch with each of you via email. Thank you. And that's it? That, oh yeah, we went out of order. Okay, thank you. I have no prepared uh, chair, co chair comments today as they are all more appropriately uh, communicated during the five-year financial plan uh, discussion. Uh, we did uh, put uh, Dan on the agenda just in case there were some other uh, City of Harrisburg updates we had traditionally asked um, Doug and, uh, sorry, Bruce and Neil to give updates um, as sometimes we don't 
even know what to ask. So Dan, if I could turn the table over to you at this point, and then I'd ask if the board has any questions in that subject area after this. Sure, well, Jeffrey had reached out to me uh, late last week about a couple of uh, issues that the uh, ICA was interested in uh, getting an update on, and, and I'll uh, comment on those. And you know, one is the Neighborhood Services Fund, which has obviously been a focus of the board for uh, quite some time. And uh, you know, the city is moving forward with uh, its collection improvement in initiatives that were uh, outlined in the five-year plan. And uh, each initiative has a designated leader and manager, and it's overseen overall by the business administrator. You know, the, those initiatives include identifying uncollectible accounts, targeting delinquent commercial accounts, delinquent residential accounts, and, and so forth, examining uh, potential changes in the billing cycle from monthly. Um, in, in the last two months, I, I can't say there's a lot um, uh, of, of an update to, to give you, except for that the city is working on those initiatives and hope to see some results uh, over time. It's not the sort of thing we'll probably see overnight, but um, it, it is something that's obviously very important to the fund and, and a focus of, uh, of, of the city. And we, we, you know, we're looking forward to see the be benefits of some of these actions. Uh, I will say that year-to-date revenues in the neighborhood services funds, the, the disposal and the refuse revenues are, are, are about equal to what they were uh, through May of last year and the year before, uh, uh, frankly. So what we're not seeing, um, at least in the first five months of the year, uh, an uptick in revenues. Uh, that's not to say that any of these initiatives are not yet working. It's very early and, and we're still going through kind of a, a rocky time generally in terms of uh, uh, revenue collections coming out of COVID, a lot of, a lot of variables out there. Um, so as far as the 2021 revenue outlook looks like, um, the, the budget was uh, for those revenue sources was, was modestly lower than the actual collections for 2020. So that were in line uh, with revenue collections here to date it is a positive sign, but that obviously has to be uh, monitored closely. Uh, but the big picture issue is, um, you know, moving forward and, and reaching the higher projections set in the five-year plan for 2022 and beyond. Uh, I was also asked for an update on filling key positions, and the one that uh, we've discussed uh, most often is the finance director, and that position remains uh, unfilled. Uh, though the, the city is continuing to advertise and, and recruit candidates, it just hasn't found uh, the right person. Um, uh, and other issue that's uh, obviously out there is the change uh, of administration. And, and there's an understanding uh, from the city that any, not just finance director, but anyone at the director level uh, would need to be reviewed by both the current and uh, incoming administrations. That's, that's not just uh, fair to everybody involved, but um, I would imagine that a candidate themselves would very much be interested in you know, knowing what the lay of the land would be in January so if they're looking for a long-term position with the city. Um, so, you know, you know, recruiting is obviously um, uh, a forefront issue from the city, but, you know, there's been some recent turnover with the existing position. So, you know, kind of a retention strategy is in play as well. The, the city lost its economic development director recently, business development director, communications director. Uh, so, so there are some issues there that have required some immediate attention by uh, city staff. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of uh, has kind of developed in the last few weeks. So uh, finally, I was asked to provide an update on the uh, American Rescue Plan Act um, uh, uses. Um, rightfully uh, uh, a concern of the ICA and, and it, it gets asked at the council meeting now and you know, reiterate what was said at the last council meeting, which is, you know, there is not a defined uh, plan for these funds yet. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of ideas that have been considered over, over the last few weeks, and it's going to take some collaboration between a lot of different parties to design a, a, a final plan. Um, the, you know, another thing that is being taken into, into account with all this is some you know, the, the, the guidance on permissible uses has been out for a, a few months now, but there are regular updates from the Department of Tre uh, Treasury on the permissible um, uses and, and, and what um, the city can safely use those funds for without risking uh, some sort of pe penalty or having to repay them. So 
those are coming into focus uh, at the same time too. I, I will say at a high level, um, there, there's a commitment to apply those funds, um, or at least one of the guiding principles uh, is to uh, apply those funds in a, in a way that's consistent with the five-year plan. And, and, and to me, that means um, identifying what's, you know, keeping in mind what, what, what's a one-time revenue source and what's a one-time expense and matching those up um, rather than trying to match a one-time revenue with a recurring expense that would far exceed uh, the one-time revenue source you're, you're using. That, that's um, just kind of a public finance 101 principle. Um, the, the other thing the city is committed to is uh, a transparent public process to establish the priority uses. Um, that's not just a good government practice, but it's also a requirement uh, under the act. Um, so conducting public meetings is, is certainly a, a plan to you know, hash out the use of, of these funds, but to piggyback on the conversation we're just having, and this is more of short term in nature, there's some operational and, and administrative um, hurdles to overcome now that you know, the emergency declaration has, um, is off and there's in-person meetings, but you, you want to make um, the, the virtual public, the public available, uh, the, the meeting available to the public virtually as well. So the, those issues need to be sorted through. So um, that's my update. Um, if anyone has, has any questions, as Audrey said, uh, happy to answer. I was wondering if you, oh, sorry, Ralph, I just saw your hand come up. I'll ask my question quick. Do you have a sense as to um, the revenue loss uh, relative to COVID that the city may be able to be to reclaim into its budget? Yeah, I mean, we, we've done some preliminary calculations on that. And that's one of those things that, um, you, you know, we're, we're trying to get our, our arms around as well. And I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I think it's about 8 million bucks a, a year annually in, in that ballpark. Um, you, you know, I think it's funny, maybe because I'm kind of a finance nerd, but uh, it, like in the act, it says um, we're, we're defining revenue loss based on the census definition of general revenue because everybody's familiar with it and established. I've never used that once in my career. And um, trying, you know, attending these webinars and, and talking to the attorneys and, and the accountants, um, you know, there, there's some grayness to it. I, I, I think I have an understanding of what I can defend. Um, that all said, Every municipality in the country is, is doing this calculation. So consensus is going to form. And Pennsylvania municipalities obviously have their unique, you know, funds and features. I mean, do, do local fuels count as a general revenue? Do all, you know, all these little issues that will get sorted out. So it is something that we're looking at and there's, we don't have a fine point on that number. Ralph, sorry. Dan, um, uh, being a finance nerd at this board actually makes you the coolest guy at the table. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, can I ask you, uh, you for a couple updates, um, just following up on a couple of ones from last month, any update on the o establishment of the OPEB trust fund? And then the second one is any update on, um, on, the, on the various um, endeavors uh, involving the, um, the debt maneuvers for uh, refinancing and defeasing. Could you update on, on those issues from, um, from the prior months? Um, there's no update on the establishment of, of the trust. Obviously, council authorized the establishment of, of the trust, but in terms of the, 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 the drafting of the, the rules in terms of, of, of the trust, there's, there's no update there. Uh, the, the financing uh, is, um, you know, financing team has been put together. We, we have a, a schedule in place that would call for um, uh, a, a transaction after the audit is completed later this summer uh, in early October or so. That's when the financing would be completed. The, the audit is expected by the end of September. Um, the uh, debt ordinance was introduced to council uh, a couple of weeks ago. We're, we're strategizing as to how to approach the rating agencies for uh, for the intent of reestablishing a credit rating. Um, and the outcome of that process will inform you know, probably a lot of things. Um, so we, we continue to move forward on that front with 
uh, a, a plan for an execution in uh, October. A follow-up question would be: um, uh, There's been some uh, discussion in the in the drafts of the plan regarding um, uh, use of fund balance to um, to pay off special demand back forbearance liability versus the use of borrowing. And um, in the in the in the current plan, it kind of tries to keep the, the options open for the city. Um, have, have you put more thought into that? And if so, could you update us and elaborate on where you're thinking of that currently? Sure. My my current thought is. You know, the, the, the guiding principles we're looking for is, you know, a fund balance target that is in line at least with the GFOA standard and probably a little bit higher for um, a, a municipality that is emerging from fiscal distress like the city of Harrisburg is. So that, 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 that's like our, our, our number one uh, guiding light. And, and then the second piece of it will be um, depending on the feedback we get from the rating agencies and general market receptivity of the of um, a potential bond issuance, you know, how would those, how favorable would those terms look for the city and, and what would be the cost of, uh, of financing and what would be the, the trade-off between um, using fund balance and um, uh, uh, issuing debt. Um, you know, I, I say, so there are a bunch of uh, scenarios we can model, right? Um, and, you know, either you can finance the whole thing or do a hybrid or or, or whatever, and, and we do have a five-year planning model to roll that into, which is um, a, a good thing. So, um, you know, we, we have a lot more information to um, kind of gather here, uh, uh, including some of the, you know, ARPA-related uses too, so. So kind of in, in summary, still, still no determination as to- um... We don't have a final plan to answer. Yeah. Thank you. But, but I, I'll say, you know, the plan of finance would only consist of refinancing the debt. It would not be any new money at all. That, 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 that part is defined. Anyone else have any questions of Dan? Uh, Doug? Uh, just one, uh, if you could remind me on the uh, federal money, the uh, Recovery Act money, uh, is there, there is a timeline, isn't there, that uh, the city or all the cities actually need to start driving the money out? Is that correct? I think it has to be used by 2024. There's not like, um, okay. uh, you know, once you hit, you got to pull down your retirement savings at age 65 or whatever that, you know, it, it, there, you don't have to start withdrawing it or paying it out, like by the end of the year or something. Okay, thank you. I will, I will add though, I think Doug is right that there's an interim report that has to be filed. Um, and I think that comes sooner, maybe by the end of this year. I think by the, I think an October report is due for any usage up to September 30th. So the reporting starts. I don't think there's a requirement to actually spend. Thank you. Great. Um, any other questions? If not, we will turn. Sorry, did I miss someone? If not, we'll turn to the discussion of the five year financial plan, which uh, the city did deliver uh, to the authority on Friday, June 11, 2021. Um, the submission was technically complete. Uh, upon the receipt of the submission, I asked the controller, Charlie DeBrunner, to render an opinion on the plan as outlined in the act. If possible, I had hoped that he would be able to submit a certification today. Instead, I received the following email, which is short, and I will read it to you. It says, uh, to us and also the Bureau of Financial Management, so I don't know if you might have received it, Dan, uh, regarding the five-year uh, plan analysis. The Intergovernmental Cooperation Authority, ICA, has requested that my office provide an opinion on the reasonableness of the assumptions and estimates in the City of Harrisburg's five-year financial plan 
as amended and restated on June 11, 2021. We are unable to provide any comment on the plan at this time as we are still reviewing it and have questions and concerns regarding significant components of the report. Thank you. Um, so I got that. I had spoken to Charlie a, a bit ago, and I know that one of the big con concerns is what we just talked about, the whole uh, financing scheme. Um, he's still trying to work through that to figure out uh, what the consequences are, what the uh, calculations are, those sorts of things. Um, so in light of that, sorry. All right, but when did he receive the plan, the draft plan? I mean, we're, we submitted it on April 30th. Um, and I'm, I'm surprised that we're just hearing about this now. Uh, I, I did not send it to Charlie uh, when you submitted the draft plan. I submitted it to Charlie when you submitted the final plan as I did not know how it would evolve. And I know it is a lot of work uh, for Charlie and uh, probably Bill specifically to go through this. So I'm sorry, Dan, I, it, was, it was my belief that it was best to use the final plan rather than to have them redo it. Uh, so that is, so they've technically had two and a half weeks or so. Yeah, it was, I know the final was submitted directly to their office upon receipt by us. So the, it was probably at the latest June, sometime either June 11, 12th or 13th, right. somewhere in that. So they didn't re re review the draft that was made public. That was that they, when they know they have to give a certification and they just got. You know, they, they, know, they, they certified the last, the last yeah. documents. So they knew they had to. And yeah. they just. Yeah, so I mean, at last time they certified it relatively quickly, the final document, certainly within 10 days or two weeks, they had gotten back to us. So, um, I mean, I think that would be a conversation to have with the controller's office, where they're not here at this meeting. Well, and, it, and, and Jeffrey and Dan, that's on me. That is when I delivered it and I asked as the chair of the ICA for him to deliver it. You'll remember that birthing the 2020 plan took a lot of while. And it is, I think, respectful to give the document to someone to review when it is final. So I am sorry if that um, uh, proved to be imprudent, but that was my decision. So that, that blame should come on me uh, rather than um, Charlie, as I know, they turned to it right away. And they've been trying to unpack the information as quickly as they can. Um, so I, in light of that information, I, I think it is imprudent uh, for us to approve or disapprove the plan at this time. Um, and so um, I might suggest that what we do is that we can continue with other conversations relative to this, but it might be appropriate to recess this meeting without any action and then reconvene at a future date and finish up the conversation when we think we might have the information uh, from Charlie. Um, is, does, how does that resonate with people? Sounds fine to me. What's the um, uh, Jeffrey or or um, Audrey? Uh, have you uh, checked on uh, statutory date by which we um, are required to act? And when is that? It it would be we tried to. It would be July twelfth. Okay. Uh, because it's technically I think July tenth, and we, that's a Saturday, so we would give ourselves till Sunday, because there were thirty one days. Um, or sorry, 30 days in June, so that we get it next. You're correct. You, technically, you would get till Monday the, the 12th, also because there's a, a, a federal holiday in that time period, which gives you one more additional day. Um, so that would be the, the, the longest that the board should wait before making an official determination. Or, or we would have to request a mutual extension 
if if need. Um, so if if we do want, uh, if that seems a reasonable task, I would like to see if we can't schedule something today just for efficiency's sake and also because it's coming up quickly. And if we didn't didn't want to go too close to uh, the actual deadline, I might suggest perhaps looking at July 8th or 9th at the same time. Uh, now, the 9th is a Friday, which may not be fun. But how does July 8th at 4 look with the board for the board members' calendars? And it would be a Zoom at that, at that point. Can I give a, get a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Uh, Carla, I think is the, oh, there she goes. All right. Wonderful. Well, let's let's consider that the date so that when we get toward the end of the meeting and we recess, we will know and everyone here will know immediately all of our guests that that is when we will reconvene. So that is Jul Thursday, July 8th at 4 p.m. Um, is there other conversation that people want to have about the financial plan at this time? I'm just going to give you all sorts of questions because I'm not going to make a decision today. Or would you like to defer that to the meeting, uh, the, to that meeting? Doug. I'll, I'll start uh, with one procedural question, although preface it with a comment. Uh, the um, letter that uh, we got from Mark Woolley uh, responding to the plan uh, is a mix of um, direct responses to comments we made and as well as deferrals of a number of comments to uh, the upcoming administration. And I understand that, uh, but there are a number of things uh, that were part of our commentary that um, really are pertinent or are simply questions on current practice or current statistics and so on that I, I think uh, could still be furnished. Uh, in a couple of his responses, he also indicated that uh, he, he acknowledged that uh, and said uh, some of that might be coming in future side letters. Uh, dependent on the significance of those issues, I, I think I'm comfortable with a side letter, uh, but there probably are a handful of additional issues uh, from our commentary that should be included as a part of that request. And uh, then procedurally, and I, 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 it's probably unfair to put Dan on the spot on this, uh, I'm just curious what the timing might be uh, to receive that side letter response. Uh, I'll have to get the city, get with the city to see what their um, kind of availability and, and their capacity is. I mean, sure. like I said, they're, they're dealing with a lot of issues right now. Um, Understood. And uh, they, they've actually dedicated a, a good bit of resources to ICA resource, uh, responses and so forth since going back to last fall. So I, I'll, I'll have to talk to them. Um, and see, and, and, and I, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the questions, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think are going to have a big impact on the, the, the recurring five year forecasts and, you know, the, the things that the essential things that make the plan compliant with, with the act and, uh, you know, side letters that address them pro probably over time too. And, and, and maybe in the form of a presentation from the relevant director. Um, or, or, or whatnot, it would be appropriate as well. Um, so yeah, I, I'd have to, to talk with the city. All right, thank you. Any other conversation? I, I do think that in some of the cases we're just asking for numbers or explanation of numbers. And I, I do think that's uh, something that is reasonable. I know that in my case, a specific question was neighborhood services fund payroll expenses going up $870,000 from 20 to 21, and we added six staff. Um, so I, I do think there are things like that. We're happy to take raw data. I mean, I, you know, it doesn't need to be a full presentation. Um, I was also wondering if there was a way that we could either just incorporate when we review the plan, incorporate Mark's letters. I mean, there is significant information in his letters and um, 
if we can just attach those as appendices and perhaps add, attach our questions as well so that anyone reviewing it in the future would have benefit of that information. Uh, I think I did, when I did the last plan, the one that came in the spring, which was the 2020 plan, I did take all the appendices and I, I made one document, which I then posted on our website. I didn't include our commentary or our, our questions. I just had the, the entire city submission as one document. So, um, but we could take a look at it and see if you'd like me to organize it in a slightly different way this time. Thanks, Jeffrey. And the only reason this time there were so many uh, just fixed, 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 and, and then you really need our document in order to, to relate back. Whereas I think last time it wasn't as vague or disconnected. Um, so great, we will uh, obviously continue this discussion and I will circle back with Charlie um, and uh, keep you all apprised. Is there, we're at the other business uh, portion of our meeting. Is there other business amongst the board members updates? If there are none, we will cruise to uh, public comments, Jeffrey. Do have public comments. We had one request from uh, Mr. Epstein for a document, which I will take care of. And we also had a, um, an actual comment. So let me get that for him. Um, please ask the board to respond and revisit the public comment period once the meetings re return to being in person. So I that is his request. That's his commentary. To, to and I said that the, that I would deliver that his request to the board. It, just for clarification, that would be that the individual actually asks their question. Got it. We can certainly do that. Yeah. All right. This is the only public comment. Okay. In addition to the request, and thank you, Jeffrey, for always taking care of those. We do appreciate that. So. I'm going out here on a limb because I don't, someone with Robert's rules background will help me here. I, I've not, uh, since there are no additional comments, I'd like to officially move to recess this meeting until July 8th at 4 p.m., at which time we will reconvene. Here's this. Do I need a second for that? Yes. Can I have a second, please. Thank you. Second. second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Consider this meeting convened or recessed, sorry, recessed. And thank you all for your patience today. Um, and I will see you in three weeks, two and a half weeks or so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.